young lady stands in her bedroom. Due to a violent storm, her house has just lost power, along with her wireless internet connection. This has severed her link to a popular video game she was playing with a young man at a critical moment. That young man is relying on this young lady to re-establish a connection somehow. This young lady is named... Named... It's on the tip of your tongue. What was the name of this young lady again? You enter your name. Flighty Broad. <coughs> no, that wasn't it. One more time. Rosalind. You examine the room. Your name is Rose. As was previously mentioned, you are without electricity, although your laptop computer still functions on battery power. You have a variety of interests. You have a passion for rather obscure literature. You enjoy creative writing and are somewhat secretive about it. You have a fondness for the bestially strange and fictitious, and sometimes dabble in psychoanalysis. You also like to knit, and your room is a bit of a mess. And on occasion, if just the right one strikes your fancy, you like to play video games with your friends. What will you do? You retrieve your arms from the purple box. The purple package's contents are private. No one is allowed to look inside. You writhe like a flagellum and puke on your bed. Ugh, what a terrible idea. The thought alone makes you sick to your stomach. You stroke your writing journal and mutter, My precious. You would only resort to such an embarrassing activity while no one was watching. These journals are for your eyes only. You get your violin. You catalog the violin, storing it in the root card of your Psyllidex. You play a haunting refrain on the violin. You waste approximately 40 seconds playing the violin while your friend is in peril. Nice time management skills there, sweetheart. You tell Liv Tyler you love her before impact. Since your good-for-nothing friend is obviously not going to bail you out in time, you issue words of parting fondness to dear, sweet Liv. Oh, if only Affleck could have been the one to make the final sacrifice instead of her stubborn blue-collar salt of the earth father then she would fall into your arms for consolation, and you would be the one to make the deceased Bruce Willis proud. You capsulog your knitting supply bag. You get the knitting bag. It occupies the left leaf card under the violin, per the tree modus's alphabetical sorting method. K is less than B. You look out the window. Your panoramic window offers a view of your yard below, and the mausoleum housing your dead cat, Jaspers, who died when you were young. Your mom had the structure erected with the spirit of scornful irony in response to your youthfully innocent request to hold a funeral for the animal. At least, that is how you've come to interpret the gesture in retrospect. You can also make out the silhouette of the laboratory next door, a facility which likely broadcasts a strong wireless internet signal. You may be able to connect to the signal from a different part of the house. Perhaps if you seek higher ground? You get your laptop. You take your laptop and prepare to make the journey through the house. L is less than V. L is greater than K. This causes the tray to be unbalanced, so your Silidex auto-balances itself. Now the laptop occupies the root card, while the other two items comprise the leaves. K is less than L. V is greater than L. You examine the book on your desk. Grimoire for summoning the zoologically dubious. This book is absolutely indispensable for enthusiasts of your ilk, of which there are very few. You take the book. You take the grimoire. G is less than L. G is less than K. You go explore the house. You leave your bedroom. Hanging just next to your door in the hallway is a painting of an exquisite wizard. Your mother collects these awful things ironically. She must know how much you detest them. 
And there is no doubt in your mind she stores these dreadful things in the house to bother you. Down the hall to the right is the way up to the observatory. Perhaps you will be able to connect from up there? Your mother's room is also in that direction. You will have to watch your step. You tiptoe to the observatory. You approach a juncture in the hallway. Beyond the juncture is the observatory. You sneak by. This door leads up to the observatory. You haven't ventured up there in quite some time. You go through the door. The door opens to an exterior walkway, leading to the observatory entrance. You've seen less inclement weather before. Oh, the things you'll do to help out a friend. You hurry up to that observatory. You try to connect. You first put your laptop down on the floor to get it situated. But removing it from the root card causes all the branches and leaves to be severed. Your items are dumped unceremoniously on the floor. You see what you can observe. You're in a hurry, sure, but that doesn't mean you can't take a moment to peek through the huge telescope. You find a gap in the clouds. It seems a flurry of smaller meteoroids is streaking steadily overhead. You're not sure what this means, but it is somewhat disconcerting. You stack laptop on grimoire to maximize elevation. You'll need every advantage you can get. You access the laboratory Wi-Fi network. There are several signals being broadcasted from the laboratory, each of relatively decent strength. One of them is mysteriously and quite conveniently unsecured, requiring no password. You select the signal and reconnect to the game with John. I'm back. Hurry up and open my door! Not that it even matters, I think I'm probably dead no matter what! Patience. You still haven't used a new totem. Huh? I believe it will create the item on the punch card. So, um, what is it? Like an apple or something? What good would that even do? We'll see. I've found no evidence that anyone has successfully created the item. And the content of the card appears to be variable from session to session. In one instance, it was described as an eggy-looking thing. And I'm quoting here. Do we have enough of those building jewels to make it? According to the Athenium, it is a free item. This speaks to its importance, in my view. Now off you go. You remove the door from its hinges. There goes the rest of your build, Grist. You put the bathtub back. You probably should have just done this in the first place. You take the totem to the alchemeter. Gotta get those stupid blocks out of the way first. The Colonel Sprite is getting awfully worked up about all of this. You remove the blocks. You store the perfectly generic objects in your Fernalia registry, potentially to be deployed at a later time. You take a bite of the apple. Anna, and I'm the beta narrator for this project, which you probably already know because you just listened to my voice for the last 10 minutes straight. But thank you for watching this episode and getting to the end of Act 1. At the moment, we still have a few rules open for our visual novel and Act 2, including Cankery, the Alternian narrator, Wayward Vagabond, and a few others. If you're interested, you can find all the links in the description. If you like what we do and want to see a little more of it, then please consider subscribing to our channel so you can be notified when we upload new videos. Or you could go to our blog and follow that as well. Once again, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.